fucking yellow. Yeah, uh-huh. you know what it is. Everything I do, yeah, I do it big. Welcome to Steelers Realtors. I'm with Aaron. Thank you very much for joining us today. We have arrived at the Matt Canada third year era, and Aaron called it back in, when was it, uh, November? Yeah, I guess it was about November. So he called it. I thought uh, that there was no way in the world that Matt Canada could survive uh, this off season. But you know, Aaron, a funny thing happened uh, right about that phone call uh, was the Steelers kind of changed uh, their approach and then their discipline on the field. So whether or not that was uh, could be attributed to Matt Canada or not, it happened. And we look at from the bye week moving forward, and they went uh, seven and two from the bye week. Now, granted, their competition wasn't as stiff, but they still had to they still had to win those games. So. Uh, we, we, we sort of have this uh, this uh, witch's brew of things happening, but ultimately his job is saved. He's going to get a, a third year, and we kind of should be used to this by now with the Rooney, shouldn't we? Um, yeah, I mean, the guy's still under contract. They're not in the business of firing anybody, and he's a little too young to say that he's retiring. So uh... <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Now, in the past, yeah, the, 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 a, a lot of Steelers in the stars that he's got his job still. In the past, the Steelers' uh, offensive coordinators have tended to, uh, you know, uh, leave voluntarily or or be fired. So, this is a, a different approach, you would say, um, uh, maybe from the the Todd Haley's and the, and the Arians of the world. Um, but um, let's let's okay. So, so so this being the case, let us first off look at the the good things that happened. Uh, from the bye moving forward last year they began to run the ball more effectively now is that because Najee Najee's foot was finally healthy was it because the offensive line you know again like it's probably not just one thing but the fact was that sure. we we could start to rely on them you know what else we could rely on too is, is when Kenny stopped forcing the issue Kenny keeping plays alive and then finding Jalen Warren um and Najee in that screen game which I'm all for that. That to me, that's how Super Bowls are built. I, I think of uh, you know, I can think of many many Super Bowl teams that that when we, if you take what the defense gives you, well, you know, then they then you keep the ball and you can score some points. There you go. Um, now we know we didn't score uh, over twenty a whole lot of times. Uh, let's let's look at like of these seven wins. Let's look at these scores. Um, where are we at here? Um, 24, 19, 24, 13, 16, and 28. So it's below it's below the NFL average. I don't know what the NFL average is uh, offhand, but obviously we need to uh, to punch it in more often. But I, I I also think that if if we if this if twenty twenty three started tomorrow, there's no way. And I hope hopefully you know in in uh, how how many months is that going to be in in, in nine months. <laughs> In nine months when the season starts again, eight months when the season starts again, um, we are going to continue to be effective at running the football. Because if, if we're not, and, uh, and and Canada, who everybody knows, uh, does not have a very um, imaginative uh, route tree and um, that sort of thing, and if we're not effective at running the football like we were in the second half of, of 2022, it's going to be bad. Oh, it's going to be really bad. Um, I, I do want to point out that one of the, the biggest changes from the beginning of the season to the end of the season, our O-line performed very well. Um, if you look at some reports, uh, you've got Kevin Dotson talking about you know, the entire offense was able to buy in to what it is that Matt Canada's vision was. Uh, at around the bye week, they had this sit down and everyone was like, oh, that's what his vision is. Now, what that looks like, you know, in practice, I have no idea, but it did translate to the field. It did seem that, uh, you know, we were sustaining drives uh, and all of that. And largely that's because of our O-line. Kenny had a lot more time to, you know, uh, to find open receivers, et cetera. I think as far as next year, yeah, I think we're going to have the run game. Hopefully, hopefully they'll look back and say, okay, now we can actually, you know, come up with some schemes to get the ball down the field. Most of the time when you have this short passing game where you're not taking these shots down the field, 
it's an indication that you don't really have that much faith in your O-line. And throughout the entire offseason last year, there was nothing to inspire a, uh, a whole lot of confidence. I mean, the guys that we've seen on the field on Sundays were the same guys that they saw during training camp and OTAs. <laughs> so if they weren't performing well you know, on Sundays, you can imagine they weren't performing particularly well during training camp. So I'm sure that the offensive scheme was adjusted uh, because of that. So maybe next offseason we see that running game and we see a lot more play action, see a lot more bootlegs and things like that, and we can actually get the ball down the field. And if that's the case, then the run game is boosted as a result of that as well. I'm going to put you on the spot. Um, do you recall, did you watch all of the Browns game? I did. So do you recall the, now granted, uh, George Pickens was wide open, but do you recall that throw, that touchdown pass to George? It was about 35 yards in the air and it was okay. on a rope and George is, is has, has gotten himself wide open and Kenny's just standing in there and uh, flashes if, 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 if I don't care if someone can throw 75 yards but if they can th- in the NFL if, they, if you can throw 35 yards on a rope like Kenny did there you're a bona fide NFL quarterback in my opinion and um, if, if that's the sort of thing that we, we can look forward to with their continuing chemistry that they're going to build, um, I, I don't want to crown him too early, but, but George doesn't, make a, doesn't drop a lot of passes, and he tends to uh, get open. And when he's not open, he still tends to um, win the one-on-ones. Sure. So the reason I bring that up is, um, you know, in that particular game against a, you know, a an opponent with a you know known as a pretty stout defense a, a stout pass rush man if 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 Kenny can stand in there and then has that has that type of NFL arm uh not not the not the distance thrower um i uh, I'm, I'm very happy that things panned out to where we got him and George last year you and, and you could say that George without the knee injury could have been the first round pick and Kenny could have been the second um whatever however you want to do it um, but um, uh, it, it does start all start with the O line, and if if that's what if that's what you know we know O lines are are it's like a, like a, a large building process. So if that's what it took, um, well, then it would make sense that Canada would not be fired because if they've come this far with this vision, changing horses midstream would almost seem like a bad decision, right? I think it's a very bad decision. I can't like do the math on how many quarterbacks have been uh, just completely ruined by bad teams switching coordinators after year one. I mean, the Browns have made a living doing that. The Jets seemingly have done so as well. Um, How many people have legitimately had great shots at becoming a franchise quarterback, but because they have three offensive coordinators in their first three years, they can never actually slow the game down. Um, So you see Kenny making strides in this system. Presumably, Matt Canada is getting better uh, at play calling and play design. I mean, yeah, we can criticize some of his play calls because it seems like every uh, every drive there's two or three terrible play calls, and sometimes those are in a row, and so it's a three and out. But you don't just you know happen to get a 15 yard or a 15 play drive every game. You have to actually be good at your job. So I think Canada's getting better. I think Kenny's getting better. So at that rate, what do you do? Do you take a chance on maybe you get somebody that's better than Canada? Well, how much better is that guy going to be? And how much harder is it going to be for Kenny to actually develop and learn that system? Yeah, and you look so at, I think yeah, you, you have look, to kind of take the two in, in consideration at the same time. It may not be you know, the greatest review of Canada, but it might just be the best of the two evils. Well, sometimes it's not. You know, sometimes you know, sometimes uh, like in even in Wall Street, sometimes the best trade is the trade you didn't make. Right. And um, you know, the best move was the move you didn't make. But having said that, Canada um, of of all the teams, I don't have the the stats in front of me, but uh, statistically, the offensive ranking teams. Just about everybody ranked around Canada and below. Those coordinators were were fired. <laughs> like so, sure. so he, he he was like he's the last man standing in terms sure. of offensive output. Now I don't I don't and I don't think Tomlin measures the Steelers by per se offensive output. And I and I and I'm fine with that because because W's are really what matters. It seems like being a Steelers fan, we 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 just have to get used to. Um, keeping our hearts and healthy because if, if our hearts aren't healthy, then one of the, one of these days we're going to have a heart attack watching the Steelers. 
Guys, it just this is a guarantee. It seems like uh, that they they always they play these these close you know excruciating games, but um, you know they're still uh, whatever that 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 that's not going to change. It doesn't seem like so. Um, right, and I think that's kind of part of what Tomlin is going for. Um, when I look at just or when I consider like what what do you think his directions were to Matt Canada? Because let's not forget, it's not like Matt Canada has just complete and utter freedom to create game plans and, and schemes and, and tactics and strategies and all of this. I'm sure that Tomlin sent it down from the top saying, Hey, we've got a rookie quarterback. We're going to protect him. We're going to have a simple offense that he can get the ball out of his hands quickly. Uh, because, and, and this is uh, especially at the bye week he's already thrown eight interceptions. So I could imagine Tomlin telling Canada, you need to simplify this. You need to make this much easier for him, much quicker reads for him. And we just need to get our defense back on the field without, you know, throwing a turnover. Like, it, it, let's play the field position game. Let's play ultra conservative. And let's try to win by one point. I'm sure Tomlin is comfortable winning by one point after, what, 14 seasons or whatever. Um, and I think that's kind of what the whole game plan was this season. So moving forward, I could imagine maybe more of the same. But I would say probably averaging instead of like that 21 points per game, maybe closer to that 25 being the top 15 in the league. Well, we got to survive the AFC North. And uh, we know that the um, man, the Bengals are fire. Uh, before we get into that, though, I did want to I did want to uh, quote this or, or, or this was reference rather the Pat McAfee show. So Pickett uh, appeared in the Pat McAfee show. And um, what I like is two to three weeks into his starting career. Tomlin started bringing him to, into coaching staff meetings. I love that. So, so, mm. so, so he is, um, and 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 I I trust him. Uh, Pickett uh, in his college career, the, the, uh, we look at what he accomplished in the um, in college because of COVID. Players were basically given like an, another year of eligibility. Sure. Up to that point, uh, you look at you know, and, and Pickett was was you know decent at Pitt. But my goodness, and, and he could he could have entered the draft. I believe Peyton Manning assisted him, like put out the feelers, like where, where's he going to go? He was, uh, you know, maybe going to be drafted seventh, sixth, seventh round type of deal. Um, he's like, well, that's not going to be, a, you know, it, it, he was motivated actually to, to either to pay off his parents' house or something. He's like, well, that's not going to be enough to pay off my parents' house. So I, I might as well stick around at Pitt and get my education and, and try this one more year. We know what we know what he did with that final year. He was a Heisman candidate, um, and uh, so what am I saying? Like, well, that 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 sort of maturity uh, was demonstrated because he's but twenty four, right? I mean, a lot of these quarterbacks coming in are uh, that were drafted like twenty one. Yeah, last year twenty one. So so yeah so. Um, and that's okay. I, I yes, uh, tor- fast forwarding fifteen years. Yeah, we we, we might not get that year uh, sixteen or seventeen or eighteen out of him like we did with Ben, who was young. I, I'm okay with that. <laughs> I'm okay with that because of because of the maturity that he uh, demonstrates. And he's also already, you know, he's also basically already eating at the officer's table, if you will. Fair enough. I think. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think largely, I was kind of worried about the whole Kenny Pickett thing, mostly because of his age uh and he really only had one year of production i mean the rest of the years yeah six seventh round pick but then his fifth year when he's basically the only grown man on the field he actually performed well uh, but it did translate very well i think you know passing the eye test is one thing the stats are another the stats are abysmal if you look at his <laughs> rookie year stats they're not that inspiring but if you actually watch the games you're like okay this kid can play and as soon as this offense opens up to him, and I think once he has a full year actually in this offensive scheme, I think you're going to see a – I think there's a fat chance that we see a large jump in production from Kenny Pickett next year. Yeah, because of all things, Brock, Brock Purdy was the uh, like the NFL.com rookie quarterback of the year because his statistics are you know clear, obviously, you know, 13 TDs you know, versus uh, Kenny's. Like, what, Kenny have seven? Um, right. So – but yeah, isn't that crazy that that we're that we're this excited about Pickett? And you look at his stats, and if you just merely looked at stats, you'd be like, you you got to be out of your mind. But is there any <laughs> doubt? Is there any doubt that he's the future quarterback? Uh, I think on- he's the future quarterback for the next two years, at the very least. I think uh, next year, if he does as well as he did this year statistically, I think he's got one more year before we look elsewhere. 
Really? Um, yeah, I, I think I think Tomlin's probably. I think he's ready to reload the gun if he has to, but I don't think he thinks he has to yet. Um, and, and why should he? I mean, you've got those two game-winning fourth-quarter drives. That inspires a lot of confidence. Um, and in the fan base, I, I could say, let alone for the coaches. So well, let's I, I say, do think that he'd be ready to move on his feet fairly fairly quickly. Uh, well, so, well, let's at least say, because first-round picks have the, the four-year contract, and then, the, uh, and then you can use the fifth-year option. So let's say three more years at least. of, of Oh, the I was thinking contract. like they might draft another guy. I got gotcha. you. A la uh, Mason Mason Rudolph, you know, third round pick, take him on a flyer. Okay, if if Kenny doesn't work out, if he's a bust this year, well, you know, at the end of the season, we'll put this guy in and give him some playing time, see what we've got. Did we hit a gold mine? Again, my my optimism like usually t- gets the best of me, but um, <laughs> uh, just sort of given what I see from him, like with with his decision making, um, I don't. You know, we, we we can't tell the future, but we, I, I don't I don't think there was a whole lot of smoke and mirrors with him. I think with Kenny, we had we had a whole lot of like uh, like good ingredients, good footwork, um, good good scrambling ability, good vision. I mean, or you know, not not exceptional, but we 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 saw like a, a lot of like the good fundamentals. Where sure. where I don't I don't necessarily think, um, let's say like a like where Cordell Stewart, let's say in the Steelers past, had had seasons where he sort of. Um, maybe caught the defense off guard and then you just sort of play, you know, you just sort of scheme around that. And then, you know, he comes back down to earth. I don't, I don't think you, you can really do that to Kenny because he, no, he's I doing agree. A lot of, he's doing I, a lot I guess up. my concern is that what we, what we saw this year is basically Ryan Tannehill's first year in Tennessee. Uh, to where, you know, Hey, they're, com- they're competitive. He's not making that many mistakes. The entire thing is reliant upon uh, the run game, though, and if you know the run game and the defense, and maybe we can score some, you know, uh, some wins by holding the ball for forty-three minutes of contest. And now I'm not saying that's exactly what is happening. I'm just saying we haven't actually seen a Kenny Pickett-focused offense moving forward. I think you will begin to see that because this is the NFL, and I think you will have to make it a Kenny Pickett focused offense to win some games against the Bills, the Bengals, the Chiefs, et cetera. Let's games not against Baltimore, we can run it with them. Yeah. But games against somebody who can put up 30 points a game, we're going to have to learn how to do that. And in the games where Kenny threw it over 30 or 40 times, that's when you start seeing those mistakes happen. Let's not forget about um, Calvin Austin coming back too. So basically we have another uh, third round pick in our pocket moving forward. And uh, looking forward to the draft. We do that that trade with Chicago, um, man. Uh, ba- basically, because of Miami not having a first round pick, that's the thirty second overall pick. So you could say that it's like having two first round picks. First rounder. Yeah, um, that's exciting. <clears throat> I wish Chase the best in Chicago. I, he didn't really have a lot of statistical um, anything to brag about from since going there, which could change in the off season, et cetera. But he he wasn't necessarily fitting in and, and um chase had a you know sort of had that me- meteoric rise initially and then kind of just sort of was coming back down to earth now do you recall in the offseason he he had deemed himself the t- was the top, top five three or four. Or t- top three or four in, in all of the nfl <laughs> yeah and That's- and look i mean i i get it right i get why he thinks that number one you don't make it in a business like this or a sport like this without having supreme hubris you know, that's kind of a necessary ingredient, and especially when you consider like all throughout high school, he was probably considered the best all throughout college. He was considered one of the best and he gets to the league in his rookie year. He has 11 touchdowns. And that's one thing that I can say about Steelers Nation. We get excited, super excited about uh, the next big player on our team. And so he was basically oh, yeah. told Cal- he was Calvin Johnson rookie year. You're the guy Maple Tron. I mean, he, he was Calvin Johnson. <laughs> Which is crazy to consider somebody who had under a thousand yards, who basically caught no touchdowns in the last six, seven weeks of the season, that we're saying, oh, he's the next Calvin Johnson. Well, you'll recall too that he had four TDs in the one game. Now, I don't know how many of those sure. were receiving. One of them, at least one of them was rushing, but uh, they were consolidated into that into the one game too. And I'm not talking smack about him, but I'm just saying that we we have uh, the, the team, Omar Khan, did a good job uh, at the trade Absolutely. deadline. With that, um, it if it came down to the the Packers were willing to give their second, it sounds like, 
and the Steelers had to decide. At, at, at that time, the Packers and the Bears might have had the same record. Uh, and they had to decide yeah, who you're going to have the faith in to lose the most games. <laughs> you know, Justin Fields or Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> and I think the Bears are happy with Fields because he's he's doing um, his part. Uh, so they're, um, you know, that they've got, and it's the NFL. Hey, t- teams teams can turn around on a dime. So I think I think Fields, heck, when Fields rookie year, he 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 gave us all we wanted on that on that Monday night. Um, probably his probably his best game up to that point. But anyway, um, so we, we look ahead uh, to the draft and um, and backing up a little bit in 2022, I like man, our, our, our draft class. I mean, let's talk about uh, Connor Hayward. All Connor Hayward did was when, when, they, when we called his number, he just like rose to the occasion and, and showed up like in clutch scenarios. So, sure. Uh, uh, I mean, he's Jalen Jalen Samuels 2.0. Uh, <laughs> Except he doesn't really run the ball. So, but yeah, he's, he shows up, he catches the ball, he makes plays. Um, and I would be excited to see more packages that we could get him on the field for. I would love to see that. Yeah, I think you'll pr- we'll probably expect him to beat out Gentry for that t- number two tight end. Um, Fire sure, Gentry's a free agent this year. Okay. So yeah. uh, he, he might be gone. He might be coming back. It's not like he performed superbly, so we're – you know, to the point where we could expect other teams to overpay for him. So Gentry may be coming back, but you know, if he doesn't, then yeah, we've got uh, a little Swiss Army knife and and Connor Hayward there. Remember that one play where he's? Uh, I think yeah, it was against the Browns where he's he's now. It was a counter run, and he's lead blocking. So yeah, th- this oh. guy this guy is just a uh, like a like a football player. He, he he's uh, which I want I want those type of guys in my team. It kind of reminds me of how remember like Keith Byers. Back in the day with uh, Bill Parcells, he was an eagle, then he was a dolphin. Um, but yeah, he was like that H-back, tight end, sort of uh, do-it-all, uh, caught everything in sight type of player. And I'm, right. I'm glad he's on our yeah. team. Tomlin always talks about players like that. He says they're a football player first. Um, and yeah, I can appreciate that about a person, someone who's not supremely athletic, someone who's not you know supremely gifted with you know height or whatever else or speed. Uh, but somehow they managed to just be a playmaker, and that's that epitomizes Connor Hayward. Okay, so we have the Haywards, we have the Watts. Uh, uh, Terrell Edmonds has gone on record saying that he uh, wants to bring his brother in, the uh, inside linebacker from the Bills. Is it Tr- Tremaine? Uh, Tremaine. Tremaine Edmonds, uh, he's, and he's he's going to be pricey, maybe the priciest middle linebacker in the in free agency. But um, Terrell is also a free agent, and we got him for a song and a dance and a kind of a prove it contract. I think it's fair to say that he did prove it. Um, is it going to be the Edmonds family affair in 2023? I doubt it. Um, I just really doubt it. I don't think the Stillers are really in the business of uh, investing all that money into a free agent, not some top tier guy. What they like to do, you know. What, what would he demand? 18 mil, give or take, Tremaine. So if you say 18, 20 million, I mean, you can get two Miles Jacks for that. And I think that, uh, you know, there, you know, or you can get another Miles Jack and, you know, uh, another Tyson Aluwale. So I think that's kind of more their, you know, their mid-tier comfort range. So I don't really see us picking up uh, a player that's going to eat up two, two cap spaces. It is the once. Omar Khan era, and he did – I'm trying to look at see much. Do you know how much cap space we have off the top of your head? I do not. Let's see here. Uh, and and Khan did um, pay Johnson, but uh, you know, but but he also did it in such a way where it didn't didn't really uh, like like uh, hamstring us for. Right, yeah, so we're only rolling. Yeah, future. we're only rolling over four and a half million. Uh, so, you know, but I mean, the, the the cap resets every year too, though. But yeah, that's not a whole lot of money. Now we got Mitch's contract. Um. Mitch is kind so of. So I think a, that's like eight million. We'll be able to dump. Miles Jack, he may be out of here. That's another eight million. You got a couple restructures that we can do, and I'm sure we can free up enough space to to do some damage in free agency. Yeah, but we got to take advantage of this of this time where where this window where Kenny is on his rookie contract. Um, I agree. I, I think like if we're if we're being smart about it, um, I think we've got to do as much as we can on defense, but put a lot on our offense. Uh, our, our defense is not going to be as good next year, no matter how much money we spend on it. I just, I can't see it being any better than it was this year. 
Um, and it wasn't particularly fantastic this year. We did lead the NFL in interceptions. Top 10 defense. And, you know, if we can get in the top half on offense and then win some gritty games, I I could see us making a playoff run. For a team that always dropped interceptions, it's nice to lead the NFL in interceptions finally. (laughs) You know, being a Steelers fan, how many many dropped interceptions are we used to? Yeah, every – it was almost every game you'd see two or three of them – which yeah. game was it this Miami, year? Miami, Miami dropped like four interceptions. It was Miami, or and, and there was like one of those interceptions could have been the difference. Uh, yes, um, but you know, but uh, alas, uh, we didn't make the playoffs. But but uh, but you know, the, oh my goodness, and how many how many AFC uh, losses at the, like the, did we have in the beginning of the season? The Jets, the Patriots, the Dolphins. My goodness, like the, the, oh, they all came back to haunt us. Yeah, that was the. Uh... And that's what they talk about. You know, you can't dig yourself too big of a hole. But it seems that we do do that every single year. And I'm not sure if that's something that we should put on Tomlin or not. I kind of lean towards, hey, it's kind of Tomlin's fault that we perform below par at the beginning of every year um, besides 2020 when we went 11-0. and 0. <laughs> But then we fell apart at the end of the season. <laughs> now, having said that, that this, that this was considered a hard reset year. So, so to do a hard reset post-Ben – rookie QB like that you transition to in the middle of the season. Um, I'm ultimately very, very happy. And I, I, I'm, I'm, I don't want to steal DK, uh, DK's thought exactly, but um, it doesn't really bother me that we ended the season on a high and, and didn't have the opportunity to go into Buffalo. Uh, the Dolphins gave the, the bills all they, they wanted, but that's, they're also a division opponent. So that's sure. sort of to be expected. Um, I'm not, I'm not, Saying we would have gone and, and, and gotten shellacked, but this this gives us an opportunity, almost like a, like a, like a, in, in college football, with having like a New Year's Day bowl. Let's say you get a chance to go out on top, you get a chance to to, to like the, your last sip of the night is sweet. Uh, so um, I'll just you know we don't have a choice, but I, I'll choose to look on the bright side. Then that way. sure takes some solace in the fact that we did. I mean, we ended on a four game winning streak. Um, if there is such thing as momentum carrying from one season to the next, then we've got all that we can carry of that. So that's that's a, that's a good thing. You get our team uh, a taste of uh, a winning streak, a taste for the playoff push, and then, yeah, maybe next year between George, Pat, Kenny, uh, our offense can do its job. I, I think our defense will do its job um, to some degree, especially the healthy TJ. Uh, I, I think, you know, Healthy I think DJ, we very no. well find ourselves back in a, a similar position week 12 of next year. So Devin Bush gone. Uh, Spillane may be gone. Um, so we're going to have to address inside linebacker one way or the other. Sure. I mean, there's a chance we bring back Spillane. Um, there's a chance. I mean, he did play basically 100% of the snaps the last four games. So we've got some faith in him. He showed and granted, up. And he showed up. Like, you know, when he's he got basically healthy. a run defender. When so. he got healthy, he, 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 he was – Pretty much as good as he was before the injury, if you ask me. Like he 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 was there. He was blowing plays up. Um, in, we, yeah, in the run game, absolutely. He's still a huge liability in uh, in pass coverage. But you know, if we can remedy that by keeping Edmonds again, keeping uh, Demonte KZ, and actually have that three safety set with Robert man, on the KZ was awesome. Robert on the field. KZ was good to have. Man, he was he was a uh, like a KG. You know, he he was he, he was everything you want in in that in that role. Absolutely, because I, I think more than anything, he wanted to he wanted to take advantage of his opportunity. So he wasn't seeing the field as much as any of the other guys. But when he was on the field, he was like, "I got to make the play so I can get paid," <laughs> and and that's the guy you want. Yeah, speaking of getting paid, um, so Highsmith is uh, and his production man, fourteen and a half sacks. It's like we we love him, um, but unfortunately, that position in the NFL when you when when GMs see that production that equals dollar signs and uh you know just like with uh, bud dupree which i I'd read an article that there's there's talk of that the titans is cutting him because you know yeah he wasn't worth the contract and you know we knew he's surprise hurt, you know all this and that and we, we love it this is not personally attacking these guys but um i don't i don't know if like what do you think do you think we're going to pay highsmith when when that time comes i think they're probably try to extend him this off season um and if he's smart, he wouldn't take it because, like you said, every other team will pay him, you know, probably, you know, close to 20 million a year. 
Um, when you consider guys like TJ getting paid thirty, yeah, I could I could see a world where where Alex gets something close to twenty million a year from some other team, and it would just not be that smart for the Steelers to do so because I think it was something like eleven and a half of those sacks came when TJ was on the field. You and know, remember, I, TJ missed half the season. And I, I I don't want to. I agree, um, and I don't want to like take anything away from him, but like it's kind of. It's kind of one of those things where when when you've got so much invested in TJ, you almost have to say, we got to trust our scouting and and and, sure. and, and keep drafting these guys. And, and Yeah, and my, I mean, my, we picked him up in the third round. Um, now, obviously, it's not a given that that occurs again, but it's also not that far-fetched to think that we could get a rookie to produce eight sacks uh, opposite TJ. Yeah, and I and I know I don't want to like get too far headed, but you know this is the reality of the business of the NFL, and sure. I'm 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 so happy for the guy that he came from a smallest school, UNC Charlotte, which uh, incidentally so does Oaken Joby. We have we have uh, more starters on the defense from <laughs> UNC Charlotte than any other team. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, but uh, so I'm um, you know you're you're thrilled, and and he um, and he did a lot like. On his own, like he 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 pr- he's proving to be the consummate stealer. But you're right; if he's smart, the Steelers would try to extend him safer, maybe in the ten range. And he'd be like, "Man, I can't I can't leave ten million a year or eight million a year on the table." So, sure, you know, no, that would that would just not be savvy on his part. And and I, yeah, like you said, it's not a personal attack on this guy. But when you look at TJ missing what eight games, seven games. And you only got three and a half sacks in those in those seven games, but in the other nine, ten games, you got eleven. Yeah. Uh, there's there's something up with that, and I think it's the same thing with Bud Dupree that we saw. Bud Dupree could not obviously uh, produce without being opposite from T.J. Watt. So imagine we bring bring Bud back like on. Imagine we bring Bud back for less than we would offer him. <laughs> imagine we bring Bud back for like five million a year, like. Well, you couldn't stay healthy in Tennessee. You, you you couldn't produce. So, but we know we know we think you can produce in our system. So here's here's five million a year or whatever. So that that right get us eight sacks a season opposite TJ. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think, but I mean that's the thing. How many you know how many guys like uh, Bradley Chubb are getting overpaid? Bradley Chubb gets overpaid. How much more is Alex Highsmith going to get overpaid? So uh, bringing somebody back like Bud Dupree, that really wouldn't be the worst idea. Here's I mean, where Heisman's going to go. Five mil. Here we go. Uh, everybody sees it coming. The Panthers. The Panthers will bring him back to town. <laughs> the prodigal son returns. Um, there you go. But no, I think uh, moving into the draft the next year, I'd like to see us get um, – like to see us do something for that middle linebacker, but also that interior D-line. Uh, the interior D-line, you've got uh, probably Alawalu's gone. Wormley may or may not be coming Free back. Agent. So you've got I don't what, think Montrevious so. and then Leal and Hayward. Now, Leal is a stif- interesting study because it seems like they had him put on weight um, to begin this season. Then then they had him take it off, and it seems like he is more effective. Remember they were running that, what did they call it? Like the, um, it, was that, it was like that three... Was it the three six or you know? Remember that they they were doing like like very 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 linebacker heavy formation. Yes, yeah. And and so Leal is almost like um from from one report like a, a like a very like a very big linebacker, which I like because because in, in in Pittsburgh we're not afraid of very big linebackers. You know we talk about Dupree, Levon Kirkland going back in time. You know like so, um. But it seems like that's where he's the most effective. Um. So, uh, he's an interesting case. Um, maybe, uh, you know, like, do do we sort of rely on him to be like a hybrid pass rusher? I would not. I mean, he didn't give you any reason to, I mean, as fans, I think oftentimes we get into this, like, man, this would be amazing. And yeah, it would be. And sometimes that this would be amazing scenario actually pans out. But if you're the front office and your job depends on it, the future of this franchise depends on it. I just don't feel like you can take a gamble like that without any evidence to kind of like convince and, you and that I mean that like in a, in a sub package sort of thing but but what I don't think he is is he's not someone that you can like that Cam Hayward can hand the keys to so sure, I, yeah, that's, like, that's so exactly he, what I was he's not about. that um so he he's 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 useful but he's not that sort of um you know man Cam Hayward is is we're going to miss him you know it's 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 getting the twilight of his career but man, sure. man does he keep on producing and um 
I tell you what, like toward the end of the year, he got two of the most in, like uh, uh, bogus calls. Uh, <laughs> the, the first one where, you know, and the first one, and, and then even Mink and him got into it. Uh, that was against the Raiders, I believe, right? Um, yeah, with the uh, the fake uh, rough roughing or the Ra- no, the Ravens. roughness call. Well, no, that was against the Browns. The first one was where, like, there was there was some where extra he got pulled down on the guy. Yeah, and, like, and so his and gravity, was, uh, his was gravity took on third down, and now all of a sudden, well, instead of a field goal, they could keep the ball. Yeah, let's let's talk about that against Deshaun Watson because I I got I got to sound off in this Deshaun Watson up to that point had been uh, get, getting rid of of tacklers. He he could not be brought down. It, he, he was playing to the whistle. Like th- That's exactly what we have to look forward to in Cleveland. This guy can escape. He's Houdini. And, yes. and so, and, and when guys would get their hands on him, he would escape. F- Cam finally actually completes the tackle because he had, because everyone else up to that point had not completed the tackle and Deshaun was keeping the play alive and completing passes. This is a very simple concept. Cam <laughs> completes the tackle in the field of play <laughs> and it's roughing the, the passer. So I, I've, I've got to think that the competition committee in the offseason has to um, know they can't call that. You know, and, and it, it, there was no, I mean, the only way to bring him down is to sort of, uh, yes, he sort of was, um, what would you call that? Like, uh, uh, like kind of swung, but like, but Deshaun is, is, is escaping so well that that's the only way he's ever going to be brought down. So the, yes. comp- the competition committee's got it, because otherwise they're going to call roughing the passer on every time you wrap him up because Deshaun is able to escape that way. Yeah, I just don't think that the NFL learns that fast. So I think it's very much going to be another season of uh, the same similar sorts of calls because at the end of the day, I don't think they're going to change the language to the rules. It's still going to be left up to the refs to interpret things. So I still think we're going to have some bogus calls like that. And as Steelers fans, we're all too familiar with the fact that those bogus calls always come at the cost of uh, the Steelers. <laughs> you know, I, 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 you know, I don't have I mean, I'm just saying that in those cases, you you don't you don't really want, um, the, like that to to in, in in this case, no, it it didn't it didn't uh, change the outcome of the game, but you know, it could have when felt. it does. That's that's the thing. Yeah, like that that's the issue that I have. It's it's like oh, well, it didn't affect the game. Well, that's just because they overcame that, right? Like, what if you know uh, all things remained equal after that? Then it did affect it. But just because a team is able to overcome uh, bogus calls doesn't mean that those calls aren't worthy of review or change. That's why I think Phil Jackson, uh, in a sense, was one of the greatest coaches because he already factored in that the NBA was a little bit like NBA Jam. Remember the game NBA Jam where, yes. like, like no matter what, they were going to keep the game close because they were, you know, you couldn't you couldn't possibly be ahead without them causing you to be stripped of the ball at the end, et cetera. <laughs> and so Phil already like like factored that into his coaching. Like, oh no, we we are, I, I we have to overcome like this WWE momentum sort of thing they're going to do. So, do you want to win or do you not? <laughs> so, um, and and that's I know that's not really fair to say, but it, it's almost like well, how how many headlines do you see uh, where coaches or players are are in disbelief? And so, uh, I guess that you know. <laughs> I, I guess that that's just always going to be the case, but but um, with 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 Watson, the the NFL is going to end up calling that on every play. If if they call if if what Cam did, because remember Watson was just now getting tuned up. Watson was uh, a, a very relaxed individual, let's say. Um, hmm. But uh, w- you know, it was only his a couple of games where he was like finally. So we we can expect this week in and week out, if you ask me. So if 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 the NFL thinks that was roughing the passer. And those referees think that was roughing the passer, then it's going to be called four or five times a game because that's the only way that guy's going to be wrapped up. No, I, I, I mean, I, I understand the point. I just, I have yet to see anything from the NFL to inspire this belief in consistency on their part. <laughs> no, I know. There, there has been no consistency in refing uh, in my entire time watching. So, uh, I think it's, it's going to be kind of what the, uh, what you're talking about with the Phil Jackson thing. It just kind of depends. <laughs> like if they're in the lead maybe it doesn't get called if they're losing oh it'll definitely get called oh my goodness <laughs> yep nba jam i'm an orlando magic fan so it was um it was penny and Shaq. so the, the magic were, were good in, in the uh, the first version of nba jam 
I, I have no idea. <laughs> well, it's kind of like NFL. It's <laughs> NBA Jam is like NFL Blitz. Did you ever, ever play NFL Blitz? Dude, I played that one so okay. so often. So it's basically yeah. it's basically the same concept. You know how an NFL Blitz, it's like the 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 way that the way that the AI, the way the computer would do is if if it would one way or the other it was going to force you to fumble or throw an interception. Yes. You know, if you were in the lead, that's the same concept. It's like is that is that's like the joke to me with the NFL. It's like, oh, we got to keep we got to keep everyone on their toes. Yeah, we got to keep it close. It's it's you know it's it's for entertainment purposes only. <laughs> it's WWE. Yeah, some, somehow secretly somebody gets fired every time there's a blowout, <laughs> and we just never know. <laughs> They just got to do his yeah, job. The, the football Illuminati, like <laughs> you had one job. <laughs> you had one job. With the... What was yes. it? Remember Superman three and in Superman three, uh, the, the the rich guy's like you had I you had one job to kill Superman. You you're telling me you can't do that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, I, I I don't know. Maybe maybe I, I don't really think that the Deshaun Watson experiment is going to be a, a particularly long one. Um, I don't know, I think man. The Browns I, will brown it up somehow. I really, I think the Browns don't have a choice because they invested so much in him. They almost like they almost like put themselves in a straitjacket, and it's like we 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 have to go roll with this guy because we don't have a choice. Oh, oh no! I definitely get it. I would just, I I just don't really see it working for them. Like, how are they going to get this guy any type of uh, help on offense to even get him to where he is? Top, you know. 15 in the league, you know, just above average on offense. I just don't see that happening. Well, how long is uh, is the the wideout um, from the Cowboys? Uh, what's his name? What is it? The wideout they traded for from the Cowboys. How, how many years is left on his contract? I have no idea. Because um, he's solid. Yeah, Cooper, Mari Cooper. Yeah, Mari Cooper's solid. And I don't know. I just, I, I, I think, I'm, I don't want to give him too much credit, but I think the Browns, uh, or I think the, the AFC North is 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 <laughs> is. Strong. I think it's going to be extremely competitive, and, I, and I'm not I'm not saying otherwise. I just don't think that he's going to be the Patrick Mahomes or Josh Allen to the Browns. No, but he's going to do what he did at Clemson. He's gonna he's gonna he's gonna be you know in like in, in Houston he's gonna he keeps plays alive. Uh, he's the guy that can extend plays maybe more than just about longer than anybody else in the NFL. And sure. uh, that's what he brings to the table. And, and, and anytime you do that, so he's like the Fran Tarkenton of, of our, our, you know, whatever of our era. Um, I'm curious. Do you no, think, I, what, I think there's some value to that. And I think he'll win some games like that. I just don't think that it's particularly sustainable. I don't think that they're going to suddenly turn into this 12, 13 win team anytime over the next four years. Cause I think it's about a five-year contract. So for the next four years, I just don't see them, you know, coming out winning thirteen games. Yeah, it is the Browns. Yeah. If anybody's going to do that, it's going to be the Bengals because uh, they, uh, they, they've, they've, they've struck gold with their first round picks. So, which, uh, which, you know, that's the beauty of the NFL is if you if you pick high in the first round uh, long enough, eventually you um, <laughs> you find yourself. With you a, might hit it big, <laughs> and yeah, and that, that's good. So, so to their credit, they managed to not bungle. Uh, the situation so good for them and they're probably going to be at least as long as Joe's under his rookie contract probably going to be you know in this in this yeah, 11 win team every year and, easy and and, and 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 you know arguably one of the best teams in the NFL one of the best at any given Sunday yes I think they could win a whole lot of games with them I do think though that there's there's somehow this belief that you know this 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 one player this quarterback is going to take these teams into stardom uh, I just haven't seen it I mean I've seen uh, a few times here and there, you know, you got guys like the Patrick Mahomes and the Josh Allen, but outside of them, you've also got very good quarterbacks like uh, Justin Herbert or uh, I mean, you know, maybe throw in Lamar Jackson. To me, it comes down and, to that, that rookie contract. You know, it's not the only thing, but yeah, now now that the Browns have sunk, what is it, twenty five percent of their salary cap into insane Deshaun, amounts of money? Yeah. Now, how now are we going to get him help? And how do you keep the guys, your aspiring, you know, uh, you know, talent? On, you know, on defense and, and on offense, how, how do you, that's the question. And that's right. I mean, we look and, at, we look it's, at, it's uh, not like they've been particularly good at homegrown talent. So it's, it's not as if they're going to be able to, or that they've proven that they're going to be able to draft, you know, young players and, and, and actually perform well with those guys. I feel like the Browns have drafted well around the line of scrimmage in, in the run game. Right. So the Browns sure, are, that's are their tough. bread and butter. 
But now yeah. they're changing the script and they're getting a quarterback worth forty million a year. Golly. Well, hey, um, it's not over yet. The story's not over yet. But man, Denver with Russell Wilson, what a what an absolute uh, just being stuck between a rock and a hard place. What 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 a what a, what a uh, and it's. And he like again he he may he may change the story that the the Broncos may come back next year and and make the playoffs but when when you're if you're a Broncos fan right now you're like holding your breath because that all those all those picks and all that money <laughs> oh my goodness yeah that's that kind of thing an and I, if it does one thing for a Steelers fan it should just make you a little bit happy that we don't play the free agency trade game. Uh, nowhere near like that, that we do rely on draft picks. Yeah, we get bust every once and again, but yeah. we're not giving up all of that money and all of those picks and busting. Yeah, like when team, when last season, it's like, oh, we're going to, the Steelers are going to bring in Aaron Rodgers. Like, are you kidding me? Right. 30, you know, <laughs> 30, whatever years old, you know, like, yeah, because 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 he's going to come in and, 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 and suddenly Matt Canada's offense is going to be better, right? <laughs> Suddenly, uh, Chase Claypool's not going to somehow fall down off of every deep throw. Uh, every Suddenly, single time his feet leave the ground, yeah. he is horizontal. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to miss that part, that's for sure. Um, but, no, so, yeah, that, that gives me uh, – and, you know, it sounds like I'm taking shots, but I'm really not. It just makes me a little happy and a little bit more like uh, – I don't know, relaxed in knowing that we're not going to play that kind of game because it's so super duper risky. And I think that largely part of the reasons that the Broncos did it is because of the success that the Rams had. Um, and, it, you know, on paper, it, it made sense. Look what the Rams did and they got Stafford and they won a Super Bowl. How much better was Russell Wilson prior to this year yeah. versus Stafford over his career? I mean, you would have thought that Russell Wilson would have been the guy that would have been even better that your shots at a Super Bowl were, you know, so much higher. It just doesn't work out. Like I guess that what, what Peyton was able to do in, in Denver ruined, ruined, uh, uh, future, uh, moves. Cause that, you know, that, that was, they, they were able they, Hey, they, they got the Lombardi, even though, uh, the engine seized, uh, the, the, the axle was falling apart. Um, <laughs> the tires were flat. Like you had to practically push that car over the finish line, but, but they still got Lombardi. Yeah, that's part of the problem, though. It gives you this confidence that this type of uh, strategy can work, uh, but it's just not sustainable. I don't think. I don't think you know playing free agency and building your team through free agency is a sustainable model. Yeah, you might get a Super Bowl every once and again, uh, but you're going to be spending a lot of money and having a lot of losing seasons in between those. Yeah, and, and it's like with Russell's contract. But hey, again. He's not. It's not over yet, and uh, maybe because they. I think they fired their OC too, right? So they're going to start from scratch. Um, well, they have to, right? To invest that kind of money in Russell. Um, then yeah, you kind of got to you got to keep that guy. But if if I'm just thinking if if I'm a if I'm a um, well we sort of heck like even with Mitch and and Mitch what came at like much much less cost and even with Mitch we're like. Uh, this isn't happening, Mitch. Like you're, you're regressing. Uh, you're, uh, you know, like, w come on. Like we, 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 you were the third overall pick that in, in that season. Was he the third or the second overall? Whatever he was. Like, I, th I thought he was second, but yeah, se yeah, top second, three. Um, second. Uh, so, uh, you know, and we we felt that <laughs> just with Mitch. So, um, right, but we could afford to bench him. Yeah, you know, if if we you know got him at forty plus million a year, well, you can't really afford to bench this guy. You got forty million sitting on the bench. That's that's rough. And um, we also couldn't have afforded to get uh, Kenny. And you know, nor you can't <laughs> draft a rookie in the first round if you just paid a quarterback forty, fifty million dollars a year. And normally, when you when you're you know the, the one silver lining is when you're losing like that, you say, okay, we're gonna have a high draft pick. Not the Broncos. That that pick goes to the Seahawks. <laughs> the Seahawks who made the playoffs. Um, so yeah, dude, how surprising! And I know we're supposed to be talking about the Steelers, but. How like surprising was the Geno Smith uh, experiment? You know, I, I would not have imagined that Geno Smith would be able to play the way that he did. Here's what and, I'm going to say: the team in the way that he did. Here's what I'm going to say about that: is is Geno came in in the 2021 season? It was on a th was it a Thursday night or a Monday night? It was a night game. Might have been a Monday night, and it was um, Geno had to had to fill in for Russell, and Geno played good. So. All what I want my answer to that is, you know what? Like I, I'm sure if Geno played as good as he did against the Steelers, 
moving forward, which obviously he did. And then I'm not surprised. He he's uh you know he's he's one of these veterans. Let's let's think of it like like Rich Gannon. Let's let's go in the past. Who who are some of these veterans? I mean, well we're not going to say Kurt Warner because but you know Kurt Warner's time in the Giants that, that was a very like special case. But he's sure. one of these guys that like you know you you they're 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 just professional and 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 at any given season I think Ryan Fitzpatrick might be uh, yeah I mean any given season they're they're going to be in the top thirty two. They're heck they might even be in the top twenty. And then, but you know, so, so I think it's a perfect fit for uh, Pete Carroll in Seattle. And he's like, well, you know, we're, we're going to, I don't, I don't think what, what, what Russell brings is, 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 is adds that much to what my vision is. Cause he's sort of a defense first guy. So I'm happy for Gino, you know, like guy like that, like you, you've, if, if that, that position and, and sports has got to be one of the oh, it's most rough. difficult. I, 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 the one thing that I get from it is, is it kind of uh kind of bears witness to my point earlier about why you keep a Matt Canada as your offensive coordinator. You look at Geno's time with the Jets, his rookie season, on throughout. They completely mishandled him, and they completely stunted the guy's growth. Yeah. Like, how is he better? Like, obviously, you want to see guys get better, you know, and, and it's just a natural tendency for them to improve, even if they are riding the bench. But suddenly, he's a playoff-caliber quarterback after riding the bench for seven years when the Jets couldn't get him to win a game. And, and I, I think largely it's because when you recycle and you just go through offensive coordinators, you go through new schemes, I think it stunts a guy's growth. And now all of a sudden, time in the Pete Carroll you know, system, you see the guy shining. So will Pete Carroll go after Stacy's mom, Zach Wilson, <laughs> in the future? Are they just going to like pluck uh, cast away <laughs> Jets draft picks? Hey, you know, you got to do what you got to do, I guess. <laughs> but no, I, I guess my, my only point is like I think – you, you, you see guys like Baker Mayfield, you see guys like him, and, and I think they're kind of one and the same. I don't think they're necessarily elite quarterbacks, and I don't think they're average quarterbacks. I think they're above average quarterbacks that in the right system, you know, with the stars aligning, I think they could become something very special so, like a Kurt Warner. Is, and um, is Baker it just doesn't different? happen sometimes. Yeah. Um, agreed. Um, but, yeah, I think, I think uh, you would say that so far the – the Seahawks uh, are, are, have won this battle, but you know it's the, the ending's not written yet. Um, do you think Baker's going to stick around and with the Rams? Maybe. Um, okay. I think you know that's. I think that's like a telenovela, man. You know, I, I think <laughs> anytime with the quarterback carousel, I think it could very much be a situation where he finds himself back in Cleveland. Um, <laughs> I mean, they're really just one Deshaun Watson injury away from, you know. And getting back on the phones and looking for looking for some players. Yeah, Baker Baker's um, has been using his 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 Delta miles um, <laughs> a lot this season. Interesting case. So okay, so we have uh, let's we we got, we got to wrap it up, man. This this hour went by fast. Um, so we got pick number seventeen and pick number thirty two, and um, oh gosh, whatever what is it like forty? Would it be pick number forty nine? So with with those three picks, um, you could say, "Oh, we got to get offensive line help." But um, I mean, would would we would we do that? Would, like, would we go would we go left tackle if that's the case? I mean, probably who, who, left tackle or center. Um, I think center is one of those positions that you can kind of get away with not having the best player there. Uh, left tackle, you I think we definitely need to upgrade over Dan Moore over there. So. I would say if we if we did go O line, uh, it would probably be second round. I think they're looking for something splashy in the first round. Like you know, what? Jordan Addison does come out. I would not be surprised at all to see the Steelers taken. Well, he did declare though, didn't he? Did he? I, I, sure. I guess I'm not informed enough to. <laughs> so um, basically, he would be the guy because uh, Deontay's got what two years left on his contract. So he he would be it would be the is it two years? I thought it was one year. I thought is it was it a two year. Two-year deal, or was that just a two-year extension? Was it, oh, man, you got me. Uh, yeah, it was one of the years reworked was the current year, so whatever it was was uh, okay. It wasn't. So we've got one or two seasons left with Deontay. So I mean, yeah, the Steelers had never found a receiver they didn't like, so that that could be the case. Um, but yeah, and you know, I would applaud that because again, you you see, you know, Kenny wants him. He's talked about like, oh, I would love to have this guy. Um, but obviously, we need some sort of star power 
on offense. And we can say George Pickens is that, but he's not really that run after the catch, uh, score a touchdown from anywhere on the field kind of player. And I think with our offense, we're going to need that. So I think we're going to be leaning on that on that run game and try to get some bootleg and some play action and things like that. So we do have Calvin Austin coming back work as well as they can. You need a speedy guy with some, with massive ball skills and a nose for the end zone. So Calvin Austin is more of the Deshaun Jackson type, like super small, but, but like very uh, elusive. So he, he might be more of a, he's not really like a, take the game over type of receiver, but um, he might be just like a, a nice ingredient, but we, we don't know. Cause we, we all, all, all right. I know is, is, I mean, is he what we saw well the, the next Dre Archer, you know, the guy ain't seen the field yet. So as a, like, you know, obviously we have to kind of like, err, you know, to, to whatever the coaching staff sees uh, on that. But if it were me as a coaching staff, I just would not be able to have supreme faith in this guy. And yeah, we need, you know, some, some pieces on defense, but, our offense is really where we're lacking right now, so we've got to get some sort of some sort of like. So major for, with the seventeenth overall offense. pick, you want you want a um, you want like a, a skill position. You're saying, what about corner? I think so. I feel like with corner, we have like a lot of corners, and um, heck, we even ha- like do we keep William Jackson the third, or like do we? Yeah, do we I keep think him? he's probably going to be coming back. Um, we got Witherspoon. Um, I, we're going to lose Wallace, Sutton. Cam Sutton. We're, we're, we'll lose him. Sutton, I'm sure, is going to cash in. You think so? Yeah, because he's been he, he's rated uh, like on the on the upper echelon of of free agent corners. So good for him. Yeah. You know, uh, we well, that's kind of, that's the business. I, I could I could very easily see them trying to bring him back though. I, I could see them trying to bring Cam Sutton back, and and even if they are unable to, yeah, okay. So we don't have the the best the best DB or the best corners, but we don't necessarily have to have the best corners. We just need a pass rush and a good, you know, middle of the field as far as uh, linebackers go. Yeah. Who would even be the starting corner? So like assuming Sutton's gone, so would Witherspoon's under contract. Um, was it his hamstring that was injured? I mean, we just didn't so. see him at all this season. Um, so it would be, it would be him and Wallace. Yeah. And Levi signed what a three year deal. I think so. Okay, so Witherspoon and Wallace. Okay, I mean that's we have to assume that. I mean Wallace is 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 one of them, and we got Jackson now. Jackson, I think didn't we give up a six round pick for him? Yeah, but I I don't know if we can necessarily count on Jackson contributing anything. I mean, you know, there's a chance, but as far as him seeing the field, uh, who knows? He might just be a bench guy next year. Well, I mean, he's under he's a free agent, isn't he? So we have to decide. If he's worth. Oh, sure, but I, I think he's probably been in the building enough to where it's like, okay, I'm going to give this. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing. I'm just thinking that you know, with him being there, them working with him, that he might actually see an opportunity for him to, you know, get on the field with the Steelers and he likes the organization. If I was him, I, I would probably, you know, give him a shot. I remember they they were going to draft him, and then the Bengals, I think, mm-hmm. like scooped him up one pick before. Is that where one we had the pick. Artie Burns draft? Yes, dude, you cost the Bengals cost us Artie Burns that year, which Burns was funny because Burns had like four interceptions yeah. as a rookie and then just yeah, got yeah, progressively yeah, worse. He, he he was like just like 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 went right down the hill, <laughs> like right down. Yeah, how does that happen? <laughs> I don't know, but I I don't I, I know a lot of people are saying like oh it'd be nice to, to draft a corner. I just don't trust uh, our scouting department to draft That's a good. It's hard, man. Like 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 it's uh. Eh. For every sauce gardener, you know, they, 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 there's three picks that don't go out, don't work out that way. Yes. And you hear a lot of, oh, you know, former first round corner, like, like really that person, that, that, that guy was a first round corner. I, I, he hasn't done anything. Yeah. Well, that's because the value that we, you know, that, that the league puts on a number one corner. It's not because there are actually that many number one corners in the draft. It's just people really want that number one corner. I mean, you, like, how many times have we seen guys like Eli Apple? He's you know, second, third team in five years. Yeah. Because, you know, they're just the, – I don't know. For some reason, they don't translate to the NFL. So, so uh, I, I would hate to see us go down this, oh, let's draft another Artie Burns uh, sort of thing. Because our defense is not set up to, to need number one corner. We need two number two corners. 
And, and, and if Akello is pass rush, if Akello is healthy, and if Jackson is healthy, and we think he's healthy, we, I mean, then you've you've got seemingly like 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 every opportunity to make it work with those guys. And um, man, I, I I do like having guys like Mallette because Mallette to me is like a poor man's Mike Hilton. I love having sure. those those type of slot uh, corners that 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 love to tackle. Uh, so I'd love to be able and to he's keep made some him. plays. I'd love he to be able to keep him plays. on the cheap. And let's not forget about Pierre Island, <laughs> James Pierre Island. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think we've got a lot of, uh, I think we've got a lot of serviceable guys on our on, on our cornerback uh, in our cornerback room. So I don't really see us needing to go first round or second round. Maybe you go third round if there's a guy you love and he's kind of fallen or something. I think you got to go offense in round one and then round two, you know, maybe middle linebacker or vice versa. If there's a receiver that you, you really like middle line, ever since we, ever since we got what we did with Shazier, uh, that ruined us for how we view how the middle linebacker position should be played. Right. Like we, and, and now the Cowboys with Micah Parsons, it's like, Oh my goodness. Like we, we, <laughs> that, that, but those, those players are like probably once every five or so well, they're generational talents that's yeah. what they call them yeah. you know and that means there's one every generation <laughs> so I, I don't know man what do you what do you think as far as biggest draft needs um i'm trying to dan moore was a little iffy and kenny was running for his life so if i, I feel like we at least need to bring in some competition with the left tackle now could that be with like a Taylor Luan? Could it be with like a uh, a veteran that, that wants to come in? Like you know, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be the draft. So, sure. and that doesn't mean that Moore is going to be beat out. I just I think maybe he was probably um, consistently the 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 guy in the line that you'd be kind of like because there are times where it was like, dude, you you just like whiffed. He whiffed, yeah. you know. And it's like I don't necessarily think that's. Uh, we can say that about about many other guys on the on the O line. So um, you know, we saw Mason Cole kind of get blown back, but see, sometimes, but but centers aren't the biggest people, so that that's going to happen from time to time. Sure. And, and and the offensive line as a unit got better, but I thinking with my head, I'm thinking, man, if if I just don't want them to reach, but if if, if there's a situation, you recall when um, DeCastro was drafted, it's like, dude, everybody knew this guy was like a Pro Bowl guard, and he slipped. Yeah, I think it's second round. No, it was thinking. a first round, but he slipped like down like in the twenty something, you know, like like and this guy was like the best guard in the draft. Okay. So so if if there's a situation where like, oh, this is like this tackle, I can't believe he's still on the board, then we should take him. But I don't want them to go reaching for uh offensive line, you know, like like you know, the the sixth best tackle at pick pick seventeen. Um so it's it's sort of obvious, but I'm I'm thinking, well, you you in this situation, especially based on what they've done with free agency, now we're not carrying a whole lot of cap space, so we're going to have to see how this all shakes out with and how much the salary cap even increases. Because because now um, now that was it YouTube TV got the contract, so right. that that's going to increase the cap, obviously, right? Because it was a huge right. Cap. But I would imagine that would be next year because they haven't got a check this year. Whatever, but but it's I guess so. But you know, it tends whatever. But 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 so but with the cap, you know, that's one thing. I just want them to be able to. Um, I, f- I feel like the Steelers have done well whenever they've gotten like high value at their pick, like TJ Watt, like a TJ, yeah. You know, I mean, and then that, you know, again, that's 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 an ob- another captain obvious, but it's like 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 take or, take or a, Shazier. I mean, Shazier was another one. Um, take like someone who's who's like like one or two at their position. That's proje- like a, a projected first rounder. I don't want the sixth best tackle. Like to me, Artie Burns was like what the sixth, the best corner, and the fifth, yeah. and the and the gulf between the fifth and the sixth, William Jackson and Artie was a big moat. I, I don't, I don't want like you know, I'd, I'd rather have uh, the guy that who's arguably the best or the top two at his position. Even I mean, you know, that being the case, no, we're not going to go draft tight end, you know, right. <laughs> but. But you could make a case. But even if it is corner, like that's the only guys that we've got, to, you know. Then okay, maybe you do that. Yeah, like so. So maybe you know, if this guy's like, like man, like this is like he's he's jumping off the the tape. But I, there's only a few positions I, I don't like. We we don't go safety, right? But we we oh, arguably no. could go. We're, we don't go running back, obviously. So um, in QB, so but there's there's a lot of positions out there. 
that I'm going to be okay. I mean, hell, if even if it's a, a edge rusher, yeah, like if, if, if edge rusher, I if think there's an edge rusher, that's it's like a smart move. Yeah, like like it's if 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 this guy is a, um, you know, in the in the year they drafted TJ, it's like, do we do we really want this this kind of like high motor, maybe a little uh, smallish guy? Well, but he's it, it, it jumped off the tape, and you know he's got the NFL pedigree, et cetera. So. Um, well, so that's if, another thing. I mean, you know, you, you look at okay, probably going to lose Alex after next year. Yeah, but you kind of also have to be worried about you know who's backing up TJ Watt. Yeah. Oh yeah, because it, it got bad, it. man. With, with, when he wasn't in there, and you, it was, and of course it was Murderers Row. We're going through Philly, Buffalo. It was, it was, it was that too. But man, it was like those games were slaughterhouse. Yeah, couldn't couldn't get anything done. So I think it's it's if, if it's me, I'm looking at wide receiver, left tackle or center, and I'm thinking less likely on the center. So it's kind of wide receiver, left tackle, interior D line, middle linebacker in the first. Uh, I would say probably first three rounds. And you see what Miami was able to do um, with when two is on the field with all that offensive talent with Tyreek and Jalen Waddle. I mean, like they're they were a force to be reckoned with. So. With Go, good scheming, yeah, and with, that's the thing. Like we, we don't necessarily know what Matt Canada can put together. I know I was one of the most vocal haters of Matt Canada this past season, but if I'm being honest, I cannot say with certainty that he wasn't just following Tomlin's orders. Well, uh, you know, I mean, the, you I mean, know he, what he, Tomlin's he's, recipe he, is, but he, yeah, yeah, I win guess. the game by one point. Um, I'm just going to defer to what what basically the what I hear um, from from the Ryan Clark, you know, the, from from the the football world, and, and basically the, the the idea with Canada is that like uh, defense is like sort like they they kind of understand their plays. Um, they kind of there's only so many like different uh, routes the receivers are running, so you kind of mm-hmm. like you you know you sort of so can can we expect in the off season that that gets upgraded? I mean, why not? We're, we're so. all sentient. We're all sentient, but but why then? Why hasn't he done it? In the first two years, so you'd say like, well, what was he waiting around for? Well, I don't know, but we're we're all growing people. We all we're all uh, you know are, are fighting. So, uh, but you know, this is this is it. So Canada, this this is your prove it year. You, obviously, you you don't have any more rope left. And uh, yeah, I think he's absolutely out of rope. I think that you know, there's a fat chance that we move on from him mid season next year. If, if and I'm not saying like maybe an actual firing. Uh, but I think he probably gets play calling duty stripped from him. There's there's some sort of adjustments made mid season next year if we're not hitting twenty, you know, twenty one points a game. Oh, that's pretty um, bad. Yeah, eight games. I mean, Cower well, Cower fired a D coordinator mid season. That's that's never that a was good... way back in 03. <laughs> that's never a good thing to fire a coordinator mid season. But but uh, um, either way, like th- this is this is uh this is it with with him. But you know, as of now, he's seven out of his last nine. From from the last time they had a chance to 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 lick their wounds in a bye week, so so he's seven and two, if you will, uh, mm. uh, going into his his final uh, his final stand. Um, yeah, that, I think there's a fat chance that the, that that the entire offense becomes more complicated. Uh, I think there's m- maybe not more complicated, but you know more scheme, little you know less uh, just throw it and hope sort of things. Just throw it short, throw it. Uh, you know, simple routes, and there's no real route combinations. Uh, I think there's a fat chance that that gets upgraded this offseason because number one, you've got no longer a rookie quarterback. Yeah, and he'll be I mean, 25. If you remember the first three and a half weeks, we were much more aggressive with the ball, and then we tried being aggressive with Kenny, and that was just pick, 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 pick. Yeah. So I think uh, you know, you you also have to keep in mind you have young. Uh, receivers. So how can you really get the most complex route trees out there when you've got guys like George Pickens and then a bunch of, you know, no offense, but nobody's behind him and Deontay. And he's still got a fairly young tight end. He's still got a fairly young and unproven O-line. Like when you put all that together, basically your only prayer is to, you know, try to protect the ball, play conservative and hope that you can outscore him by one point. Which, yeah, I mean, and that sort of was, uh, how Belichick handled Brady at first. Remember, remember how Brady was, uh, at least in the first Super Bowl, it was protect the ball. And, you know, no, I'm not comparing Kenny Pickett to Tom Brady. I'm just saying, like, you... you <laughs> Dangerous. And I'm not doing that. I'm just saying, you... you, you that That's... 
you know, that's uh, the even coaching, Terry Bradshaw. That's the coaching strategy. Yeah, you, you, you. Um, but I, I loved having a running game back. My goodness, like, like it, it, it all comes together better when you and and, and it, it, the O line. I mean, it's it's just good for the fan base. It's good the team. If like it, for many years in a row, we couldn't run, and you know how like like it, emasculating that is. Got to be for those guys in the field where where you just can't. <laughs> um, the the now I will say like um. But didn't shouldn't shouldn't uh, with the Browns game because because Kenny was like undefeated on his sneaks, but um, because I was in the car and I wasn't watching at that very moment. But shouldn't they have challenged that? Didn't, didn't wasn't it? Um, wasn't the idea that Kenny actually did break the plane on the play before they that Najee fumbled? That's the that's the one drive that I didn't get to watch. So yeah, you and I miss. <laughs> so anyway, here, yep, here, here we are. Here that. we are on, on the web talking about the Steelers. We but but um. <laughs> But my point being is like, man, like we, uh, like it's nice that Kenny was was like obviously like very successful on on his sneaks, because remember back like for so many years in a row the Steelers just could not convert for short yardage. Yeah, and then I mean it was just never it, run the quarterback sneak. No, you know, yeah. So, um, so I, I like all of a I like having got that some short yardage first downs and running quarterback with sneaks. And not, with Najee, you know, granted, you know, it's 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 he can't flash this that much. But man, when he starts getting in his groove, now he's hurdling guys, and it's like it's but it's affecting the morale in a, in a positive way. Let's not even talk about that that touchdown uh, against the Raiders. Oh my good, was it? Uh, excuse me, the um, was it the Ravens or the Raiders that he had that? It was the Ravens? Yeah, you're talking about the stiff arm for the touchdown. No, the, the catch. Oh yeah, that was the Ravens. That was a beautiful. Oh my goodness. Yeah, beautiful that, game winning drive, game winning pass. I, I loved it. I loved it. Yeah. So so we, but I feel like he's also like man. You get you get him running and like you. It's like his talent just then just it goes into turbo mode. I, I hope so, man. Because I saw a lot to love from him at the you know the kind of the tail end of the season. Uh, at the beginning of the season, man, he was it, it was looking like Jalen Warren was our best running back. He's an awesome compliment. And, yeah. and, and, and now between the two of them, like they just like give, give, give Najee a spell. Warren is, has, has proven to be really good on the, and his screen, like the, th- to, for a nose for the first down, the marker, you know what I'm saying? Like he, 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 uh, on those third yeah, he and five converts. I mean, whether it be, yeah. you know, reaching the ball over or whatever. So that's nice. And I think, I think that competition has kind of spurred on something in Najee as well. Hopefully it continues. Hopefully I mean, we could, we should be able to expect that Jalen comes back next year and is even better. So you might see you know much more of a sixty forty type uh, rotation between the two of them, which would be nice. Whatever it is, man. Like w- when we started seeing Najee like at the end of games, shedding tacklers, six, seven, eight yard. I mean, that's exactly who we thought we were getting that's when we, we drafted. drafted. Man, I love that. And so, so that, that has to be, and I'm, 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 I'm glad. I mean, it, it, and it's, it's, again, these are obvious things and, and, and the, in the talking heads in the off season always say, Oh, Steelers have to uh, get back to their running game identity. But, but it, it, they do, they did have to get back to it. And it, it is, they did, it is but and this off season. The number one thing that I think that we have to do is obviously keep that run game focus, but also learn how to capitalize on the success of the run game. We have to be able to get some downfield shots. I'm talking 40 yards plus. We have to be able to do that. If we're unable to do that, and I don't really see us improving that much more because, yeah. again, all you got to do is stack the box. You stack the box, and then, okay, well, what do we get three yards at a time? And now it's fourth and one, and we're punting. Because it's not as if Najee necessarily wowed us. I mean, he was still averaging 3.9 yards per carry. It's not necessarily that great. But there was an obvious. Yeah, but there was a decide. And, and with his, as his foot got healthier, there was a. Uh, to me, like and, and he was as good as he's ever been as a Steeler in and in, in moments at the at the end of the season. Sure, sure. I'm just saying, like it's it's not as if we're Tennessee and we have Derrick Henry in his prime. No. So with that being said, even Tennessee needed to be able to get those down the shot explosive plays in order to actually you know, make these these deep, you know, playoff runs. So we're gonna have to be able to to manage somehow, some way 
to, to get the ball down the field 40 plus yards. We can't have another year with 147 yard uh, targets to Deontay Johnson without a touchdown. Oh, that was bad. <laughs> you know that I mean? was, yeah, that was, that's a record. That, that was like a dubious record, right? <laughs> yes. We, I mean, there's no way that we can, we can do that again. All so right. Well, I, there, I think it's very much play action bootleg. And uh, Aaron is calling for Jordan, uh, Jordan Addison. Is it a- a- Addison? What? You're calling, is it, uh, it's Adelson, right? Or is Addison? Addison. Addison. Yeah, there you go. All right. Is it, uh, Jordan Addison with the 17th overall pick? That's what I'm open. And, uh, excellent chemistry with, uh, Kenny. So we keep, keep the, uh, the chemistry train going, uh, from Kenny being in the building, uh, to, uh, as a, as a Panther to now being on the Steeler side and bringing back Addison. Well, yeah, I think I think Addison could have very much a Jamar Chase type impact on the Steelers. Ooh, man, that's exciting. And I'll I'll admit that when when they drafted Chase, I was thinking, oh man, they you know the, the Bengals have an opportunity to sew up their offensive line. They didn't. It's like, well, and then Chase just took the NFL by storm. Right. So I mean, you can imagine how much how much better it would be for us to be able to find a talent like that with a decent O line. What's his forty time? Do we know? I mean, of course he hasn't. I, he has, I have no idea. Let's see. Let's see if, if we have. I mean, it's going to be unofficial. Uh, yeah, I, I usually don't uh, know that information until like three weeks before the draft. <laughs> <laughs> let's see here. What we, uh, according to, all right. So he runs a four or five, which that's fine. You know, if if, if you're if if you're, uh, it's it's like kind of like a, a, a corner. Like if you have ball skills. Then a four five is, is is just fine. I think that's what that's that was A B, right? A B was A B was four five seven. Yeah, so you have ball skills, the four five is, is, is perfect. Yes. So I, I would love to see I would love to see Jordan Addison come in because then you've got that extra guy that can get deep, that can, you know, get open. And so you pair him with someone like a, a George Pickens and you got a Pat Fryer moose underneath. And all of a sudden you're looking like Kansas City's offense. I'm not talking about in production, but in players and personnel, you've got the same sort of thing outside of quarterback. Yeah. So then you just got to have scheme. And if you can scheme it, then you can get, I I think, yeah, probably 30 points a game. I think that's entirely possible. If, if you can get Matt Canada to, (sighs) to do what offensive coordinators are supposed to do. Well, uh, yeah. So, so um, we're, we'll be optimistic. It's it's the final. It's the third and final year. Uh, you know, sh- should he should this just be uh, um, ineffective or, or just uh, humdrum? Then okay. So we'll move on next year. And I and 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 w- as fans, we can know that the, it wasn't a knee jerk reaction. And and then we'll we'll be doing this thing next year where we're we're hoping the next guru or whatever wants to come our way. But in the meantime, uh, so that's. That, that, that much is uh, settled already, so that's good. Um, the 2022 NFL season is still going on, so let us conclude with um, this next round of playoff games and your predictions of uh, the eventual Super Bowl winner. Oh, Lord. Um, no one. <laughs> <laughs> no, you must. You must. <laughs> so who do we got? Um, so we have got Jacksonville at Kansas Bills City. Playing the Bengals, Bengals this weekend. at Buffalo. And then you got the Chiefs playing the Jags, and then we got the Giants uh, going to Philly, and the Cowboys going to San Francisco. So it's kind of like a like a, like a not early '90s uh, type. Okay, of... so I would probably say it's going to be Niners Bills in the Super Bowl. Okay, so that was a Super Bowl that that everyone wanted to happen in 1990, but the uh, the Giants spoiled the party and uh, and knocked out Joe Montana for a whole season, uh, mm. and. Uh, Kicked five field goals, if I can re- remember correctly, and, and then upset the Bills in the Super Bowl. So we're finally going to get that Niners Bills Super Bowl. Uh, that's uh, I I don't think many would disagree with you because the Niners are playing um, really good defense right now. And yeah, and, you, and you've got their explosiveness as far as like uh, you got guys like Christian McCaffrey, Debo. I, I think there's a fat chance that they they can handle business. And then the Bills, I think Josh Allen finally gets his revenge. And you know, gets into the Super Bowl. Yeah, that game against the Chiefs last year was nuts. They they yes. they, they changed the overtime rules because of it. Yeah, I think he'll actually. I think the Bills will be able to pull it out this year. I don't think they're as good as they were last year, but I think they're getting better and better. Um, so that that'll be interesting as long as he can you know stay away from those end zone picks or those red zone picks. I think Josh Allen has a 
There's a chance. So the Niners. I think they wind up beating the Niners. Do the Niners host the Giants or do they go to Philly for the NFC Championship game? Oh, they would have to go to Philly. Philly's number one seed. Well, I'm saying, but so you think that the Eagles are going to beat the Giants then? Yeah. Or um, the Eagles beat the Giants? I think so. Okay. So the Niners have to go on the road to Philly and, uh, and, and beat the, beat the Eagles. And then the man, I hope the Eagles, I don't know. It, it, yeah. And the bills. Now the bills with this chiefs thing, it's going to have to be in an, if it goes down this way, it's going to be on a neutral field. Cause if they beat the Bengals and the chiefs win, like that's the whole thing with the, the Monday night game is, is so where's yeah, that, where's that neutral field going to be, be one of the determining factors where, in, in, in the, the bills victory is you're not playing an arrowhead. Okay, so where do you think that field's going to be? Because there was even talk it might be Pittsburgh because it's like a cold weather city. That would be nice. Do I have you, no idea where it might be. Because if they take these two teams who are designed, like the Bills are designed to not be a dome team, right? You can't really put them in a dome, can you? For, for um, I, think, I think you can. I so, don't think it hurts them. So where would it be? Would it be Atlanta? Uh, you know, that actually makes a Minneapolis? lot of sense. Who knows? I mean, I guess we're the NFL's got to figure that out like b- by this weekend, perhaps. Yeah. So I, I think fat chance Niners Bills. Um, I, I think the Bills definitely make it. I think the Bills definitely make it. And I think they win against against the Niners and probably against the Eagles as well. Okay. They get that elusive first Super Bowl victory. Um so I, yeah, I, what, I can, what is your uh, prediction there? I have a hard time going against Patrick Mahomes. And I, it's not because it's not because I'm like on the bandwagon. It's just, um, man, they're just. I I could almost see a uh, a uh, a, nu- a rematch between the Niners and the Chiefs. Okay. Um, but I, I, it's kind of the, it's it's more of like a I've not analyzed it. Um, if 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 I'm going with what I want to happen, I usually want chaos to ensue. So what I <laughs> what I want to happen is going to be like the Jaguars and Giants. That's what I want to happen, but because okay. uh, I, you know, but and, and and let's just talk briefly about this Jaguars game last week. My goodness, um, <laughs> do you do, do, does that sort of give them any momentum coming back from twenty seven to nothing? Do, do we? Uh, I don't think so. It's sort of Cinderella. I think it gets them excited, but I think as soon as they get punched in the mouth, I think they, I think they start like oh, coming back down to earth. Yeah, and the Chiefs you know, just the Chiefs just have so playing, much offense. They're playing the Chiefs. Yeah, Chiefs get fourteen zip lead on them. I, I think it's over with. Now that's how the game went down, the AFC Championship game last season with the Bengals and the Chiefs. And then you know what it is is, and the Chiefs got greedy. They're up like whatever they're up by in the first half, and they're just dominating. And then they don't take the field goal. They get so greedy, they go for it like fourth and goal or whatever. And they don't get it. And and I remember at that moment in time, like, why why would you give the Bengals any hope in this game? Right. And and sure enough, I'm not saying like but but like like but if if <laughs> that's where like analytics get the better of of coaches. Like uh, take the points, like like keep the onslaught going, but um, Yeah, like where they they start to outsmart themselves. Yeah, yeah. you gotta you gotta take the points. <laughs> Yeah, I was even watching old highlights of the Steelers. Uh, the um, uh, oh, I have another interesting theory: the Steelers Bengals uh, playoff game, um, where remember where Ben left the game at the end and then came back, and it was yes. and, it, and the Bengals, of course, uh, had the two penalties and it was it was insane. Um, but a couple of things about that game. But first off, is the Steelers were uh, like controlled that game throughout like three quarters of it, you know, eighty percent of the game, and they also outsmarted themselves too. They they're um, they're up. Uh, they 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 elect to go for two to make it uh, seventeen to nothing instead of sixteen to nothing. And okay. and it's like, but why why not make it sixteen and force the Bengals to now have to get two touchdowns with two two point conversions? Now right. now when it was fifteen to nothing, like so now they could get the one touchdown and only have to worry about the two point conversion on the second touchdown, like like. Here they wanted to go up by three, but like, why not take make them make two difficult plays? And that's exactly what the Bengals proved to do. They 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 were able to um, come back and 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 tie it up, uh, or ho- however it went. But but it's like you 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 kind of gifted them that by by uh, um, by outsmarting yourself. 
Secondly, we remember Vontez Burfecht blew up Antonio Brown bad in that game, and he couldn't play it the next week. That was a very yeah, like, vicious hit. I almost wonder, <laughs> and we might have talked about this before, you almost wonder like if that hit like concussed him so bad, and we know AB's behavior has been like on a, on a, on a trajectory, um, not necessarily from that moment, but we know that he is, AB is behaving um, perhaps like somebody that, that has... Like, 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 <laughs> like you might yeah, want to so question it's, their it's mental health. health. Um, yeah, you don't want to say it, but it's like, does this guy have some sort of brain trauma CTE. stemming from his time in the NFL, specifically from that hit? Maybe. I think it's quite possible. Um, I think it's quite possible, though. If you look at players like uh, Ryan Clark, who talk about AB prior to this, he said that uh, basically before AB got paid, that they knew that he was going to be a problem as soon as he got paid. Yeah. And then he got paid and he wasn't even, you know, the biggest payday. I think it was like 10, 12 million a year or something. He was getting paid at that time. And uh, apparently he became the diva then. And then once he got that 18 million highest paid receiver in the league, I think that that also went to his head. So I think basically he had some bad tendencies in the first place. Yeah. And then you add in some level of trauma and yeah, you've got a recipe for disaster. <laughs> Yeah, he doesn't stay out of the news, man. He doesn't. And it's pretty sad because oh, it's just sad. It's just sad. I said, and I'll, I'll go on record saying it here, I think that we should have kept AB back in 2018 and got rid of Ben. I think we'd be a better place. And I think he'd be in a better place. Yeah. Yeah, Tomlin, um, I guess, looking looking back, he was able to, um, well, not he himself, but but AB and whatever, whatever was going on with the Steelers, it was like, but when he left Pittsburgh, we, let's say that his um, antics just sort of uh, like like oh, they, they, reached they a ran crescendo. Out the rails, yeah. <laughs> the volcano exploded when he left Pittsburgh. Yeah, it would, I, I guess a lot of people want to give Tomlin credit for that, and you know maybe maybe he does deserve credit for that. I don't know. I don't know, but it is a pretty sad story because I thought, and I think many of people thought that he was going to go down as one of the uh, like Randy uh, Randy Moss, you know, uh, kind of kind of players at the end of his career, like Randy Moss, Terrell Owens, like one of these most beloved players, yeah, uh, Hall of Fame. And now I don't, I doubt he ever even gets a whiff yeah, in the Hall of no. Fame. Yeah, uh, no, yeah, it's 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 sort of I guess sort of a warning lesson to, to for those 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 receivers that um uh, and you know in the hall of fame is kind of tough on receivers anyway yeah especially nowadays sure um, but i mean you know you, at one point ab had like the biggest you know most dominant five-year run at wide receiver in nfl history um it was magic and, between like with him and ben where, where like you you couldn't even double team i mean he was just breaking breaking double teams Dude, it, and, a lot of times it just seemed like the most miraculous plays. I think it was against, I, I want to say it was Kansas City, that one touchdown pass where it kind of like bo bounced off of a defender, bounced off of AB's hand, and somehow he still caught it with one hand inbounds, even though there's like two or three guys around him, and he like bounces them off of him somehow, and he runs it in for the touchdown. Yeah, you remember the play? Not that specific one, but um. I think there's, if you saw so it, many. I probably just did a horrible job describing it. <laughs> no, but but yeah, but he 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 certainly yeah he he was uh, he left it all in the field that's for sure. And, yeah, uh, so that, it, that was, it's sad to see that uh, you know sad to see that era gone. It's been gone for a while, but it's like every time he gets back in the news, it's kind of like a cringe. Like oh, this guy again. <laughs> George Pickens is flashing um, some like that wow, and I'm 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 very excited about that. So he he he's he's that guy where man if it, if it's uh, if it's close to him like he he tends to uh, you know he, t he tends to, to bring it in and so I mean, I'm, I'm not I'd saying he's at AB he yet but like because I think um, that rookie year success you know uh, I I don't know I've just, I've seen way too many rookies have success and then you know second year just like meh yeah. All right. Well, this uh, this time's uh, gone by fast. Uh, so you've got the. Uh, the Bills uh, bringing it in, I, I just—it's hard for me to go against the Chiefs. So I, I, I tend to think that the, the Chiefs are going to represent the AFC and, and the the NFC is, I don't know. Um, I mean, could this? Do the Eagles just have just so much horsepower 
that um, they, they just win in a boat race? Maybe it's possible. That's that's the. I don't know, man. I think that's going to be two really great championship games because I think it will be Niners, uh, Eagles, and then probably Bills, Chiefs. Yeah, I think it's going to be two great games. Yeah, the NFL will be happy about that. But uh, I, I'm, and then also we have to keep an eye out what, what city. So um, do they do they go uh, indoor or outdoor? I think um, it would be interesting if they went to an outdoor. What about like Nashville? Kind of like like in between the two, like like a meeting in the middle. Nissan Maybe. Stadium, Nashville, Tennessee. Well, see, I think uh, I guess I'm kind of thinking the same way that they kind of come up with which cities can host a Super Bowl, and it's basically how many hotels are around, uh, you know, so on and so forth around the stadium so that way people can come in from out of town and obviously this wouldn't be the super bowl but it would be something akin to and i think they probably use the same rubric as far as judging which which cities would qualify so that's why i'm thinking atlanta would probably be a pretty a pretty solid pretty solid bet okay yeah they uh they know how to put on for sure all right well we'll, let's do this again uh it was supposed to be much shorter but uh hey We'll uh, we'll see. We'll uh, we we let the conversation go where it goes. And uh, thank you very much, uh, Aaron Stanford, ladies and gentlemen. The uh, second or the other half, not the second half, the other half of the Steelers Realtors. Aaron, do you have anything to plug uh, before we go? No, no, uh, no shameless, no shameless plugs here. But yeah, thanks for having me on. I, I appreciate the conversation, and hopefully, uh, yeah, we can do it again soon. And you are a proud. Uh, proud uh, father now of, a, of a, a newborn another newborn or you know your second newborn how is yes. how is life uh with a newborn uh well she's six weeks old now um and it is amazing but also uh ooh, topsy-turvy so are you getting much sleep these days uh, very little okay very little <laughs> well <laughs> then i appreciate you coming on that much more and uh, we appreciate uh, the time away. Um, so, uh, shout out to Juana for uh, for allowing you on this uh, this podcast today. And I uh, look forward to doing it again. Thanks awesome. a lot. I appreciate it, man.